The UK stock market is in a really bad spot right now. It's kind of what I'd compare to as like the Manchester United of financial markets. From performing great in the late 90s and early noughties with Beckham, Giggs and Ronaldo, but since the Sir Alex era came to an end, it hasn't really been the same. Lack of investment, perhaps some poor leadership and global competition increasing are just a few of the many reasons that, just like Manchester United, the future prospects of the UK stock market are slowly dying. And there are big question marks as to whether the glory days will ever return again. P.S. I apologise in advance for all of you United fans out there for any references made in this video. So let me start with this. If you were a true citizen of nowhere, perhaps an alien from another planet of sorts, and you were looking to scour the earth for the best possible return on investment, with absolutely no homegrown bias, would you consider putting your money into the UK stock market? Let me know what your gut feelings are down in the comment section below. Now, perhaps the answer for some is yes, because the UK stock market, historically speaking, has traditionally been a pretty good dividend payer, and it also trades at pretty good value too. Perhaps aligning to that of some of the principles of one of the greats, Warren Buffett. But if your answer to that question was no, and that you wouldn't put your money into the UK stock market, then the UK stock market has a big problem. And look, you wouldn't be the only one that thought that way because from doing my own research and from building out my own investment portfolio, that's the same conclusion that I came to too. And that's because good dividends and favorable price multiples are not enough to convince me that the UK stock market is a good long-term investment. So let me share with you guys some of the research that I've done because if you're new to investing or even if you're currently building out an investment portfolio, then knowing some of the issues involved in investing into the UK stock market are certainly going to be issues that you're going to want to know about because it could just be a huge mistake that costs you big time. Fun fact, we've had as many prime ministers in the past four years than Man United have had managers. And it really doesn't matter whether we're talking football or economics, arguably the performance of a club or even indeed a whole nation is sat at the feet of the person who stands on the touchline or the person who sits behind the desk at number 10. Because they're the people that fundamentally make all of the decisions. And the reality is leadership here in the UK haven't been making great decisions in recent years. And the proof is in the pudding. The International Monetary Fund forecasts that the UK will have the weakest growth amongst all of the G7 countries in 2024. The Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development believes that the UK will have the highest inflation amongst the G7 countries for 2024 and 2025. Our interest rates are higher than all of our global counterparts in the United States and Europe. The Department for Working Pensions states that 17% of all UK individuals are living in a state of relative poverty. And it's forecasted that Brexit is costing the UK economy £100 billion a year in lost output. Those statistics, amongst many others, are just a handful of the reasons why investor appetite and overall sentiment for the UK is so negative as of right now. Now, one of the most common rebuttals to this is, well, the economy isn't the stock market, to which I'd certainly agree with you. So let's set aside some of the economic stresses that we're currently experiencing, and instead let's just talk objectively without any kind of facts or figures. Let me present to you a list of the top 10 companies in the FTSE 100. Which of those companies really fire you up and get you excited about the future? Because to me, I don't really see that in any of them. We've got alcohol, fags, expensive petrol and drugs, and that's a defensive mix as bad as Harry Maguire and Phil Jones. Now, when you compare that to the top 10 companies in the United States, on the other hand, it's on the levels of Vidic and Ferdinand for performance. Like if you had the choice between Apple and Microsoft or AstraZeneca and Shell, I'm certainly going to be putting all of my money in Apple and Microsoft all day long. It's no wonder why we've been referred to as the Jurassic Park of global markets, because we've not really brought anything new to the table in many decades. The UK is kind of what I'd refer to as the old economy, whereby the constituents of the FTSE 100 kind of demonstrate that. Versus the likes of America, on the other hand, which is just full of forward-thinking, innovative tech firms. So with that in mind, market performance is just as heavily weighted on psychology than it is facts and figures. So if you were, say, that fund manager managing client funds, would you actively look at the UK stock market as a favourable investment when the economy is performing so badly and some of the top companies in the FTSE 100 are stuck in the dinosaur age. Perhaps I'm being slightly facetious and perhaps even some of you guys may disagree with me, but I think if I was managing client funds or perhaps even my own investment portfolio, 
then I think I'd certainly be looking elsewhere for a better return on investment. And that's not just true for me not wanting to invest in the UK markets because the reality is a lot worse and the figures are truly shocking. Let me get straight to the punchline. The UK stock market is shrinking and quite quickly at that. In the early 2000s, the UK stock market made up about 10% of the global equity market value. But in 2023, it was just 4.1%, meaning the relative value of UK markets in comparison to other global markets out there has shrunk by more than half. Clearly, our global positioning and overall investor appetite is 59% lower now than it was just 20 years ago. That's the stark reality the UK markets are facing into, and UK investors too. And here's why. Firstly, you've got the flight of capital. In the last seven years, we've had six years of equity fund outflows. This means that we overall have a net seller's position on UK markets. To the tune of £25 billion in 2022 and £26.3 billion in 2023, which was the worst year on record for UK equity fund flows. That's the best part of £50 billion in outflows in the space of two years. Now, not to completely alarm you, because this figure does only account for about 1.3% of the total market value of the UK stock market, which currently sits in and around about £3 trillion. But even so, it wouldn't take much more than a couple more decades of this negative performance to really see the overall market value of the UK stock market absolutely plummet. It's certainly not a great story to go by, especially when you think about the importance of investor sentiment on the overall performance of any financial market. Because as the old saying goes, no investor wants to catch a falling knife. Secondly, we've got domestic demand. And when I say domestic, I mean people that live here in the UK actively wanting to invest in UK equities. Check this chart out from the Office of National Statistics. It shows the relationship of UK share ownership of UK individuals like me and you guys in blue. It's got UK other, which I guess is like your pension funds, which are in gray, and then the rest of the world in an orange or red color. Now, what's important to note here is that all the way back in 1963, the UK total share ownership from UK individuals was about 55%, which probably makes sense because back in the day, there was no such thing as commission-free trading apps that allowed you to invest in global equities a couple of clicks of a finger like trading two on two who actually are providing all of my subscribers with one free share valued up to a hundred pounds when you open an account with them by clicking on the link down in the description below but despite this as global investing became more readily available which ironically was helped on by our kind of old economy financial services sector very much being at the forefront of the industry that's actually resulted in our total uk share ownership by uk individuals dropping to 15% at the turn of the century, and as of right now, sits at about 10%. This compares to the US market, whereas at about 2019, 55% of all US stock was owned by US individuals. You kind of have to look and think, well, if UK residents aren't prepared to own UK stock, then it doesn't matter whether you're an alien from another planet or a foreign investor from another country you're probably not going to want to invest in that stock market either. Thirdly, you've got IPOs. With that line of thinking, if individuals won't invest into the UK stock market, then what makes you think that kind of growing businesses are ever going to want to publicly list their company on the London Stock Exchange? Surely they'd just go over to New York and get a little bit more bang for their buck. Because we talk about valuations being cheap over here in the UK, but that's not always a good thing, especially when you're trying to attract investment and businesses to a market that's on the downtrend. If you've got a company that's looking to go public, they're obviously going to want to maximize every pound they're able to generate per share that they're going to sell on the public market. And typically, companies value themselves based on something called a price to earnings multiple. It's essentially how much investors like me and you are prepared to pay for every pound in earnings that that company generates. Now here in the UK, the FTSE 100 trades at about 12 times earnings, whereas over in the US, the S&P 500 trades at 29 times earnings. Now, if you're a business owner looking to go public and raise capital, you're obviously going to want to go and get the highest valuation possible for your business. Therefore, not just making the UK stock market an attractive to investors, but also an attractive to innovative up and coming businesses that want to publicly list their companies. And that certainly doesn't bode well for prosperous future returns for UK markets, especially when firms are listing elsewhere. 
On the topic of returns, now let's take a look at the last two decades of returns for the FTSE 250. And the reason why I'm doing the FTSE 250 instead of the FTSE 100 is because the FTSE 250 actually historically has performed better than the FTSE 100. So at least I'm trying to give you guys some more of the optimistic piece of analysis. Now between 2004 and 2014, the FTSE 250 returned 174.6% to investors, a rather impressive run of form over that 10 year duration. Now to manage expectations, that's like winning the Champions League level of returns for market performance. But between 2014 and 2024, the FTSE 250 returned just 19.6%, a dismal rate of return by any stretch of the imagination. That's a compounded annual growth rate of less than 2 percent not even keeping up with the rate of inflation you could have literally invested all of your hard-earned money into the FTSE 250 over the past 10 years and in real terms actually be worse off despite bearing all of the risk of the UK stock market. Now let's compare that to the S&P 500 and the US counterpart. Between 2004 and 2014, the S&P 500 returned 56%, meaning the FTSE 250 actually massively outperformed the US market, despite the US market very much being what's considered as the global benchmark. But despite this, between 2014 and 2024, the S&P 500 returned 168.5%. So you can certainly see how the tables have turned in just two decades. Almost like the difference between, dare I say it, Manchester United and Manchester City. What was once a great market now no longer appears to be and there are simply just other better performing global markets out there. And that, in my opinion, is kind of where the UK sits right now. We're hoping for more foreign and domestic investment, better performance, better leadership, better decisions and a better economy. But the reality is unless things change both economically and politically in the UK market as of right now, we'll just continue to fall short of all of our global counterparts. And that's the reason as of right now, I'm personally investing all of my money into the US stock market, where I've actually recently been able to double my money across a handful of positions that I have. So if you wanna check out what those positions are, then be sure to click on this video next. <laughs>